Today, I'm going to be doing this lily pad seam dresser. All I've done to this piece so far is, it was already painted, so um, a lot of the paint was just basically falling off of it. So I um, took I took my sander, sanded it down really well, and then I used boss because I did go down to the wood in some areas. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any bleed through with that one. First, I'm gonna go over the colors. I used aubergine, Bunker Hill Blue, Cobalt, Pure Ocean. I used the Honky Tonk Red in the front, and that's Peacock right there. So these are my blended sides. Um, I used some good blending brushes, and I just did sort of a quick sideways blend and two coats, and it ended up looking like this on the front. So you can see I'm just showing my brush. I'm just using the oval, I think it's the medium from Dixie Belle. Spraying lightly with water on my blended surface. And then I am taking some cotton and then I spray it really well so it sort of runs down the surface and I'm making some drips. So I was pretty careful with this part. I wanted it to look like a reflection and you can see as it slowly drips down, it just looks like a reflection kind of coming at you. So it's a pretty simple, straightforward way to make a reflection. Okay, and I'm continuing down. And I just keep doing the same thing as I come down. Paint on really lightly on an already wet surface and spray it so that it drips down. A little more, a little here, a little there. And spray. So it's just really fun. Drippy is, I don't want it to be too deep or too dark. If it gets a little bit, if you have too much paint on there, just spray it a little bit more. If you have too many drips, you can just go back and wipe them right up with the brush. As you can see, I kind of did that right there. I wanted it to look my, like my light was coming from the left, the top left, and sort of heading down towards us. So I sort of did it in a sideways pattern. Okay, so now I'm adding in more color. I'm adding in a little bit of that pure ocean color. And again, spraying it both to mix them together and to make those drippies coming down. It's also really thin, so when it dries, because there's so much water in it, it won't be like a thick white color. It will be almost translucent. and you can go in and clean up any areas. And I kind of went back and forth over the top of it with the brush afterwards too, to get this sort of look. Now I'm adding in some of using that honky tonk red and adding in some lily pad shapes here. And I know it's so silly to add the red as a lily pad color, but I wanted it to sort of show through underneath and give them sort of a deeper, different sort of color using it. So here I add some green.
then finally some daisy this yellow. more above on the right. using some of my darker colors under not underneath to sort of deepen them and create a shadow. And for this one that would mostly be the the bunker hill blue. If you ever feel like your paint is too thick or it's drying too quickly you can just use the water to spray it like I did there. So now I'm going above and adding some darker areas beneath the top ones. Again just creating that shadow. Okay, it looks like I added in more drips. Same idea, I again used, it looks like I added some cobalt in there, that pure ocean and the cotton, and I was just going for more light, slowly layering it up. And then I kind of use my brush and go in a horizontal motion back and forth to catch some of those drips and sort of get it, give it some of those reflection lines. I'm just bringing the Bunker Hill blue back in here and creating more shadows. Slowly bringing that Bunker Hill blue in. Creating some shadows, giving it some depth. So as far as a watery sort of highlight background goes, this was pretty straightforward. Do the drips, bring your shadows back in, add more drips where you want them take them away. Um, it's one of my easier water effects. And I did want to have sort of a horizon line where it seems like the water sort of faded off or maybe ended. And so I just brought some of that Bunker Hill blue and uh, around the very edges of this piece, I would have done the aubergine and Bunker Hill blue, Bunker Hill blue mixed. It makes a really deep, dark, nearly black color. So you can see I've got the aubergine in there. It's adding a little hint of purple and I wanted my edges to be the darkest and the aubergine and Bunker Hill Blue Mix is gonna be that, the darkest.
here, I mean, I'm still really mapping it out. One of the reasons I put those few... Here's cotton. <laughs> That's my white. One of the reasons I put those few lily pads in there is was to sort of map it out and then I kind of knew where I was going to put things. Uh, you can see here it's dry. I let it dry. I have my misting bottle and just spray it down super lightly, not enough to drip this time. And I'm going in with my brightest highlights on the very top. So still just adding some in. You can see I put some little lines across there too. Little thin lines with a smaller brush just to add in some really bright areas. I had probably blended a lot of my drips out and <laughs> wanted to come back in and add some more. Part of this process it wasn't a hard process but part of it is just patience and was patience in waiting for it to dry and layering I think that's what brought the whole thing together was the layering so you can see I kind of blended it in and now I'm adding in some really bright whites those are just little glints where the Sun is hitting the top of a ripple or the top of a tiny wave any sort of disturbance is going to cause that really bright light to just sort of shine so it almost looks like it's sparkling. some highlights in on the sides as well just sort of bringing it slowly slowly bringing it all together and right here I am using the Dixie Belle mini that's one of my favorite blending brushes so I put it on there super light with the Dixie Belle mini and then just sort of blend it into the rest of the paint that was still wet And if you sort of step back and take it all in at this point it's really starting to look like water with all those layers and everything going on underneath the surface and just adding in a few more light areas some more ripples up oh, I guess I got it too bright there so you don't like it just come in and wipe it right off or tone it down second coat over those really light white areas to get them as bright as I can and here I am adding in some really bright greens so I used Daisy right there and I still have that red background so it makes almost a deep brown color when you mix it with the green and it all sort of blends together I wanted to do sort of multi-colored lily pads to give them more dimension and more depth and I think I really managed to capture that and we still have that honky-tonk red in there and it looks like kudzu. This is from the Dixie Bell line and Daisy. And I'm sort of highlighting the edges. So that's where, you know, the light coming down is going to hit the edges first. So they're going to be a little bit brighter. And then it dips down in the center. So I definitely made the centers a deeper color. I also used evergreen on that. 
so it looks like I'm getting into a bit of evergreen in there, which is just a really straightforward deep green. So my greens were basically kudzu, palmetto, and evergreen. Now I'm coming up on the top and adding my details just the same way pretty much into the top ones. sort of layering the lily pads here. The lily pads are very, very layered. So always make sure to put some on top and some underneath. And for the ones underneath, I highlighted the edges, all the edges, except for the part that goes underneath the top lily pad. That part I keep pretty dark, just to show that it's under there so there's a shadow. I'm sort of flicking the brush towards the center and using the green and it sort of gives it those little the little lines that you would see on a lily pad they sort of go towards the center of a lily pad so that's what I was doing here I was just aiming towards the center and using my brush to make just a hint and dragging that highlight in some plum crazy in here as well. Honky Tonk Red and a little bit of plum crazy too is what I ended up doing. And plum crazy is a purpley pink. Still working on those highlights. And the whole piece is slowly taking shape now. And I've just got a bit of cotton and a hint of that light blue, which was pure ocean.
just barely any on my brush there. I am just sort of brushing it off to the side and adding just a little bit of depth off in the edges and in the sides too. times but I finally like where it's getting to so I think today I'm gonna work on putting I'm gonna put some reeds in and I think I'll start on this side I'll move the camera around a little bit maybe a few more lily pads I feel like there would be some more like off in the distance so that's where I'm gonna start I'm gonna start with my lily pads and um, this is all dry it's from it's from last night but I'm gonna start with one of my favorite colors for all things green is evergreen. And uh, we're gonna put in a few more of these little pads up here. I kind of wanted them to just be random and disappear, sort of. Um, so I'll make them a little bit smaller as they get further back and more flat too, because they'll be further off. And just do this. Maddie is happy inside tonight. <laughs> and I'm just drawing them out. So I do want them overlapping. And they don't have to be perfect yet. But um, I might make some reeds coming down up here. Let me grab the main color that I used for them is palmetto. And it's just a, you can tell that's what I use the most. And we're going to get some more of these lily pads in. Adding yellow in here. What was I using? I think daisy. Yep. It's just straight up yellow, but then it kind of mixes in with the green and I'm adding it around the edges to highlight these. So I'm trying to add it on the side, basically where the sun would hit it. And I'll come back and darken them again too and add, I added in some other colors just to give them a bit more dimension. And a bit of that plum crazy. Um, I did add with the other ones, a tiny bit of honky tonk red in the center. I don't want to add too much, so I'm going to wipe most of it off here. And I just kind of blended it right in to the centers. These are all still a little bit wet. That dark green is still a little wet. But I basically just layered them. Um, I try to be more patient this time around with them so that they might look a little weird, real, a little bit more real. So I'm gonna make this purple. And I added some of that in. It kind of made like a shadowed area, I don't know. It just gave it a little bit more depth. And then just play with it. Yeah, that's pretty much the same purple. Just kind of grayed them out a little bit so they weren't so bright. And that would probably work pretty well up here too because I do kind of want to have them fading into the background. So now that I've got these new lily pads in, them, uh, in there, I'm gonna put a shadow underneath them. So let me rinse my brush. And we'll do a couple of flowers too here in a second. Okay. This, um, this is the Bunker Hill blue. It's kind of mostly what I did the background with. So I'm just gonna put a shadow in here. I'm just trying to make these not so perfect around the edges. Uh, so they look a little... Maybe a little more realistic or still a little bit, you know, you can tell it's not real. That's okay. I want it. I want it to be pretty. So I think I'm going to put um, a couple more flowers in here. And I'm getting some peony as pink. And um, a hint of that purple that I mixed earlier. And I'm just going to mix those together. and make them lighter with some white. So we have like a light purpley pink color. We might need a little bit more blue. There we go. And you could use other colors for this. I just always like mix whatever I have open. Okay, let me get some background petals in here. I'm just gonna go for it right here because I do need more going on on this side of the flowers, and I think I'll, I'll end up adding one in here, I'm sure. But for now, 
I'm gonna get them in in this pinkish color for the lilies. I'm doing like a really basic petal shape, you know? So there's the idea of it. And then I'm gonna go in with some white and kind of overlap those um, petals and blend it into that pinkish color. So we're just like making these outer petals at the same time. And um, you can come back in when it's a little more dry and like redefine these petals a little better. But I kind of let them go out flat because you know, they lay on the water. I don't mind some of that orange in there for like dimension, but maybe I'll do that in this one. I'll do like an orange background. And I'll come in and touch up these front petals too while we're at it. And then go over it with the other one. And then I'm gonna come back in with the white really quick right now and finish him up. And then um, usually before I leave the flower itself, I'll do the reflection. It's not quite dry enough yet to do this, but that's okay. There we go. And I'm just going to do some like little wiggly lines. And I'm leaving a line between the reflection and the flower. And I'm going to put in some darker color like that Bunker Hill blue that I did the body of this piece with. Because you know, flower not only creates a reflection, but a wee bit of a shadow. I'm gonna put this in here, just a little bit darker. And add a little bit of shadow too underneath it. Now that looks good, I like it. Um, I'm gonna do the, the reeds pretty big, so I think I'm just gonna use a bigger brush. Okay, and I've got coffee bean out here already. And I'm just gonna mix that with evergreen. Yeah, it's pretty close. Maybe a bit more brown. Because um, colored greens is really dark. And they're all gonna start, you know, in here somewhere. small reeds. And another one. I want them to come out, but I don't want them to be leaning out too far. And I'm just going to keep coming down slowly can add some smaller ones in here, kind of lean them out. Um, you can make them bend by just doing a little like that, you know. And then you're gonna end up, I'm gonna end up wanting like just a whole bunch of, whole bunch of lines just layered. And um, you can go in kind of with a darker color in the background. I'm gonna add some palmetto and just try and darken this out a little bit. And then get lighter as you come forwards. But that's why I did the edges dark, is because I knew I wanted to have all of these wreaths in here too. They look a little crazy right now, but they'll get better. I'm just adding all these lights in. And thinning some out. And 
think I'll make this one like really up close and big. I think I'll make some ripples coming out around these, kind of like I did um, with the white and the blues right here. I kind of made them come out around the lily pads. And I put some of those colors back in to my reeds too. So I'm using that angle brush again. And I just wanted to give them a little bit of dimension. some pink on the lily pads and I just I just wanted to add like just the littlest bit to kind of like make it cohesive so they're all like a similar style. Um, and you can use the colors differently like for specific parts like you can use the purple for a shadow or you could use, and you could use like the yellow for highlights. Just depends on the look you're going for. And I'm kind of blending it right in there. I didn't want it to be too bright. All right, you guys. Um, I'm just gonna tune out. I have lives every week on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks for hopping on. You guys have a great week. I'll see you next week. Bye.